In the last part of this series, we talked about how Hollywood, life coaches, and even teachers were perpetuating the myth that we only use 10% of our brains, how beer does not kill brain cells, and the myth that we are either 100% left or right brain. If you missed that part, be sure to check it out after you watch this video. Today, we'll be diving into three more myths, tackling learning styles, the 100 billion cells myth, and asking the important question, do we have the biggest brains? But first, be sure to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button to never miss a video, comment your favorite thing about the human brain, check out the Patreon in the description, and share this episode with your nerdy friends. I'm Eric Malachite, author of the cyberpunk novel Ego Trip, which has so much to do with the brain. And this is Science Get. Psychological essentialism is the idea that people inherit their learning styles from their parents, that their true nature is tied to their genetics. People who believe this are often found to be extremely resistant to changing those beliefs when faced with studies that effectively disprove the idea of learning styles altogether. Suffice it to say, the idea that learning styles are set at birth is a total myth. You cannot predict a child's academic future by looking at their parents. Two experiments tested the learning style of 668 participants, with more than 90% of those people strongly believing the myth that learning styles are determined at birth, and the other 10% of those people not holding any strong beliefs regarding to learning styles. The experiments were conducted by lead researcher and visiting scholar at the University of Michigan, Shailene Nesikaville, PhD. Nansikaville had this to say about the experiment. We found that some people are more likely to believe that students inherit their learning style from their parents and that learning styles affect brain function. We also found that educators who work with young children are more likely to hold this essentialist view. Many parents and educators may be wasting time and money on products, services, and teaching methods that are geared towards learning styles. It probably isn't a surprise to people in my generation to hear that adherence to a specific learning style can be extremely detrimental to the education of students. This subject actually hits pretty close to home for me too, because at an early age, I was diagnosed with ADHD. While as a child, I showed high aptitude in many areas, my teachers in elementary school didn't know what to do with me after my parents decided to take me off of Ritalin. One teacher went so far as to face me toward a wall in the back of the room so that I couldn't disturb her class, which only made it more likely that I wasn't going to pay attention, and as a result, I completely disassociated from the rest of the class. If you can't tell, Miss Beckel, I'm still salty. Research shows that students benefit most when presented with a variety of learning styles, rather than tailoring approaches to different students. In many ways, this myth is very similar to the one we talked about in the last video concerning the belief that people are either left or right brained. While it is certainly true that there are dedicated parts of the brain that handle different tasks, the brain works best when the whole thing is engaged. As also mentioned in the previous episode, students proficient in math are observed to use both hemispheres of the brain at the same time. The myth that the human brain has at least 100 billion cells can be traced back to science communicators, people like me, attempting to find relatable ways to engage the public with science facts and research. It's why you hear size comparisons to football fields, 747s, and in this case, a claim that the brain features as many cells as there are stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Now, at the time that these claims became popular, no peer-reviewed study ever supported them. In fact, the human brain is thought to have about 89 billion cells, and the latest estimate for the number of stars in our spiral-barred galaxy is around 400 billion. So, you know, not even close. But how were neurons counted before this 89 billion figure was released? Well, believe it or not, the method used to estimate the number of cells in your brain was closely related to the one used to estimate the number of stars in our galaxy. And this method is actually pretty flawed because it relies on counting the neurons in one part of the brain and then using that as a basis to estimate how many are in the rest based on the brain's volume. Neural density just isn't uniform, so it's challenging to get an estimate of the neurons in just one tiny part of the brain. Concentrations of neurons are also extremely dense, so it can be extremely difficult for someone to count them individually. The new method for estimating neuron counts in the brain, which is what the 89 billion figure mentioned earlier is based on, is a bit different. Scientists dissolve cell membranes within the brain to create a homogeneous soup, which I know sounds really disgusting and horrifying, but stay with me here. 
staining the nuclei of cells and allowing them to be strained and counted. This allows for a more accurate estimation of the brain's total number of neurons. But even this is essentially an extremely educated guess, using extrapolation like the old method to come up with a figure. Still, the myth surrounding the number of cells in the brain holds no candle to the idea that we've got the biggest brains on the planet. It probably should be no surprise that human beings, being the big bad dominant species on Earth, have long assumed that they have the biggest, baddest brains on the planet as well. But all of us Douglas Adams fans know who the true dominant species of the Earth is. It's mice. And the answer to the ultimate question is 42. It's generally well accepted that humans are probably the smartest animals on the planet, but what's really interesting is that new research into the archaeological record has revealed that our brains aren't so special after all that they're no more advanced than a primate of our size should be. In our video on the genetic experiment that resulted in a larger brain in a marmoset fetus, we reported that the experiment merely substituted one gene in the fetus's DNA sequence, suggesting that our evolution was likely tied to the introduction of this gene at some point in the last 1 to 1.5 million years. While humans do seem to be the most intelligent species on the planet, that intelligence is not related to the size of our brain. Human brains weigh about the same as a dolphin's, around three pounds, and there are plenty of animals out there in the wilds with much larger brains that are not nearly as intelligent as a dolphin. Actually, dolphins are some of the smartest animals in the world, capable of complex problem solving and social interaction. Not only are they able to learn as individuals and use what appears to be a complex system of communication, but studies have shown that they're able to then pass what they've learned onto their offspring and other dolphins. They even use tools. One example of this is how dolphins often attach sponges to their noses to help protect themselves while searching for a meal. Cephalopods are another great example of fiercely intelligent animals. They're capable of complex problem solving, but strangely they don't live very long, some having lifespans as short as two years, and they don't form social bonds. They're the proverbial monkey wrench in the prevailing theories around the evolution of intelligence. It's long been thought that the evolution of smart animals was directly related to longer lifespans, but cephalopods complicate this. Their brains are also quite a bit different from normal animals too, as much of the higher level computing is actually done in their tentacles rather than the brain itself. Suffice it to say, the human brain and intelligence as a whole is something we're just barely beginning to understand, and that's okay. If you dug this content, be sure to hit that like button and comment your favorite thing about brains, dolphins, or cephalopods. Be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get, and check out the Patreon, where you can get early access to new videos, science fiction, dark fantasy, and horror stories, your name in the credits, and so much more. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.